like what do i even say that you know covers what i feel right now it's just every time i i it, you know the whole while when manish sir was talking the entire time when you were showing the video when you were talking it was just exactly it was a very beautiful session this is the future of the world and we were so glad to be together with such people and it's just thank you so much for presenting such a beautiful journey thank you very much uh, i i tried to to make some application of this innovation done in in, in biotechnology so i think uh, it's very interesting the other parts that you are showing and the beginning lecture yesterday or, um, uh, but i i think uh, in this area of uh, research uh, there's a lack of uh, transfer to practical stuff uh, for example in architectural design so i think that maybe there's in in the, this presentation you can see uh, a lack of uh, prototypes, uh, but maybe mainly because of, of the context that is happening around the world. But I think there's a big effort in, in trying to, to have a view of the future of how things should be made uh, uh, to be more sustainable. Okay, so um, actually, let's give the audience to let's give the audience a chance to say something. You can either say it in the chat box or you can raise your hands to unmute yourself. So if the audience would like to, please come ahead and uh, ask any questions or anything. Would anyone like to uh, volunteer? Yeah, sorry. I'm checking out the, the, the chat to see if there's uh, any kind of questions. Thank you very much for the, 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 the greetings. This is a future. Ah, there's a, here there's a question. This is an interesting question. Um, Ram Rai is asking if it's is too costly uh, well, nowadays, as it's a, a new technology, probably it will be uh, costly. But all of these uh, systems are tried to to be thought well uh, to be done uh, by your own in your own house. No, the third uh, kind of projects that I showed that was three D printing uh, projects. Yes, uh, nowadays the the machines are can be expensive, but you know that technology develops very fast. So probably in one or two years could be very cheap to have a 3D printing machine to do these kind of, 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 of structures. There's another question that says, Suganda Chitaye, uh, how do you mimic the material? Well, uh, actually uh, the idea is not to mimic the material, just to produce a, a new kind of, of material, no? Uh, so um, in, in both cases, in the first, in the second case, I, uh, sorry, um, is done with mycelium and, and kombucha. That is very easy to to grow by yourself uh, at your home, and that kind of des of designs that we saw in the in the middle part of the presentation uh, are developed also to be easy to 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 build. No. In the last part, uh, there's more technology involved. So uh, you should uh, need uh, some uh, 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 complex uh, machine, but uh, the material that will be, that will be done in the house uh, are materials that are called biomaterials, that are materials that have a biology, biological origin that they have many recipes uh, in many uh, parts of the world, uh, many uh, uh, universities and other investigating uh, spaces where they are developing the materials. So it should be also very easy to, to, to make that materials. The, the challenge in that case, should, in both cases, is to uh, produce a big amount of materials so you can, uh, and make uh, uh, the whole building, no? 
Um, this other pro what projects are planned for the future? <laughs> Uh, well, in my case, I'm a designer, so uh, I try to, uh, to to keep on, uh, on my side of the of the the innovation uh, chain. So, uh, well, my plans are to keep on designing and build the possibilities of these new materials. I hope that in some moment I can make a joint venture with some producer of these materials to start doing uh, prototypes. Uh, this uh, another question. I think this kind of material is very sensitive to heat. So how do you gonna wield with very high temperature areas? Uh, that's a very good question because uh, here in, in, in Chile, we have a Mediterranean climate mainly. So we don't have that kind of problem, no? Uh, but I'm sure that the, that's not a problem of materials. Uh, nowadays, many buildings are done with very bad materials. And there are some design operations that can let you uh, um, solve this kind of, of problems. So I don't think uh, that if uh, you design this kind of projects in, in a very heat uh, place, you will have uh, uh, problems to, to develop them. Can, you, uh, can this project be different from different countries? Hey, absolutely, no. Uh, as I told you before, uh, all of these projects uh, have been uh, thought uh, in the context of my country. So when you when you design in the context of another country, probably you will meet another challenges. But I, I I'm very sure that this kind of materials and technique will help you anyway to to develop in in, in other kind of countries in other kind of environments. How can you fortify materials that don't have a high tensile strength? Uh, well, um, as I tried to, to, to tell you, uh, more of, uh, the more of these projects are thought uh, in compression. So these materials can be very useful in compressions in another kind of um, structural, structural um, uh, needs, uh, probably you will have to change the material. Um, but um, I have seen also many investigations trying to uh, change the structural resistance of some materials to other uh, structural resistance like tension, for example. Thank you, sir. Beside the design, what more does this bring around us? For example, we made use of it. Oh, uh, I don't think it's a merit of the project, I mean, of the materials and the technique to avoid, uh, for example, the use of AC. Uh, you can have, a, if you don't design well the system, you will have a, a, the same problem of heat, for example, of cold, no? So I think the, 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 the challenge of uh, sustainability uh, it works a little bit with the materials, but it works also with, uh, with the design, no? uh, with the geometry, the form, uh, etc. There's another question. Considering wood with the, in the mycelium brick houses will not be degraded by the fungi? That's a very good question because uh, there's a, like um, an ugly part of the story that in some moment the, the fungus must, must be killed no? by heat. So before you put the components in the, in the site, the fungus uh, is killed. So there's no problem of the fungus eating the, the wood in this case, but that's a very good question. <laughs> uh, sorry, Ritika, uh, I, I don't know how much long we, I can be answering the question because I think that somebody after me or is in a parallel channel. No, no problem to continue with the question. No problem. Please, please continue with the question. <coughs> okay. I, 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 I see I you continue. enjoying so much. I, I don't want to rob you of that. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm having fun, so it's good for me. Um, all right, thank you, sir. What kind of challenges one has to overcome before bringing their ideas into application? <coughs> uh, 
Uh, that's a good question also of need easing. Uh, the challenges, well, the challenges that I'm facing right now is to be close to the development of the material. In my experience, in, in this kind of uh, design, usually there are two bands, no, or two, two, two teams. Uh, one team is, are the ones that are very uh, impressed and happy uh, trying what are uh, what is the result of cultivating organisms no uh, uh, so they keep on uh, uh, just producing materials but they don't never uh, confront the the challenge of of applica applicating this kind of materials to design and the other team is the team where i am no uh, where there's uh, too much design uh, lots of uh, thoughts and, uh, uh, of how can be this applicated, but uh, there's a lack of, um, of testing this uh, kind of material. The other um, challenge that I think that uh, uh, you will uh, confront is um, the, the, the size, no? The size of, of this kind of, of, of constructions. Uh, usually you see a lot of uh, biofabricated uh, uh, objects, no? like lamps, uh, I don't know, uh, 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 glasses, uh, whatever, no? that has a small scale. But I think that today um, machines are very well developed and, and, and technologies also. So and, uh, and a big scale production of these materials it can be solved uh, if you copy uh, the production of, of food, no? Uh, mycelium uh, uh, fungus is something that you eat and is uh, productive in an industrial scale. So uh, you can uh, switch that industrial scale, not for uh, uh, making uh, uh, food and, and, and better for making a, a, a architectural components. Is there any alternative way from which the cost of production can be uh, minimized? Well, um, uh, in the case of 3D printing uh, architecture, um, the, the, the process can be automated and it can be fast. So even though the initial cost of producing the material or, or using the, or buying the machine, uh, probably when you, you start uh, making a lot of, uh, of houses, uh, the cost will go to, to zero. Thank you, Nidhi. I think there's no more questions. Are there any more questions? We'd love to have all of them. No problem. I, I don't see him complaining at all. Uh, uh, would you, Alejandro, would you like to like continue even further? Uh, uh, continue, answer, I, I don't see more questions, but no, thank you. No, 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 no worries. Okay, okay. okay. So, hmm. uh, uh, very, na uh, very nice to meet you. To, to meet you. Um, one of the good things of pandemic is that we can make these kind of exchanges uh, easily by this software. Uh, it doesn't worry what tower it is. Uh, this kind of things always happen. So I'm very happy. Uh, I would like to, to see the, the rest of the, of the conference uh, and have a, a very Happy ending on, on the fifth of December. Now, definitely, definitely, we look forward to a happy ending. Okay, thank you for coming. So thank you so you. much. Okay, see you guys having fun there. So, um, next up, we have uh, Harry from High Biolab. Harry, are you there? Harry, can you hear me? Uh, 
okay so no hari i guess we we would have like really appreciated hari coming because now that alejandro has like set these standards i really don't want to like <laughs> over look at so um just in case i, I remember hari has sent a video that i'm going to play now for all of you to see uh i'll just give a brief introduction about hive biolab hive biolab is the first community lab in ghana africa dedicated to rapid prototyping of ideas in biology research enterprising bio startups by helping and providing resources to students and graduates to translate science to businesses there are numerous programs and discussion activities like beekeeping community project and much much more so here's a video just to explain all my points Hi, and uh, we are super excited to be participating in this year's Darwin Conference. Um, I would say that being one of the participating community labs in Africa uh, during this year's Darwin Conference is such an opportunity for us. And uh, we would want to, as part of giving you a tour of uh, our community lab, want to start off by telling you who we are and then also introducing our team. So my name is Harry Akligo, and uh, I happen to be uh, one of the co-founders of the Hive Bio Lab, and uh, also managing the, the lab and seeing to its operation from day to day. Uh, as part of, uh, so just a brief background about the Hive Bio Lab. So the Hive Bio Lab is one of two uh, biomix species on the African continent uh, established um, a couple of years ago, through a partnership between the University of Cambridge uh, research group called the Open Bio Economy Lab, funded by the Shuttleworth Foundation and Kumasi Hive, to create an innovative space where young people can leverage uh, the powerful tool of biology to solve community problems. Specifically, the lab has been working on the Open Enzyme Project to create an open, equitable, and sustainable bioeconomy in Africa uh, with the mindset of helping produce enzymes for molecular biology applications. So this actually, these partnerships and the core uh, aim of how we can create accessible uh, platform for enzyme production. So the establishment of the high bio lab. And we have since been carrying out this uh, enzyme production locally using locally available materials. Again, the lab has been focused on researching and seeing how we can uh, deploy these enzymes that are produced for use in diagnostic purposes. And currently we are researching on how we can develop a multiplex uh, diagnostic platform for identifying four main uh, pathogens, one which is implicated as a fungal infection and the other implicated as sexually transmitted infections. We have made quite a significant stress with that research and we are so excited that we are able to leverage locally produced enzymes for developing um, a multiplex diagnosis which can be used in a local context. And this is the power of uh, species like this that are set up. So just giving you a quick tour of the lab, we, our lab is a small one, uh, but we are still able to use it for uh, the amazing works that I have taken you or explained to you not too long ago. So we have uh, our benches all around. We have major or majority of the equipment that we can use for doing molecular biology. We have our centrifuge, we have our chemical racks uh, up here uh, loaded with tons of molecular biology reagents. We have our spectrophotometer. So we, we are making use of the little space that we have in doing this. But on top of the things we do, and because of the environment in which we find ourselves, where we have uh, limited access to funding and we still need equipment to do the kind of work that we are supposed to do, we are involved in locally building hardware for biology. So harnessing the power of 3D printing and laser cutting, we are able to manufacture 
or locally build some of our hardware that we use for our experiments. And through the open design of uh, open source hardware, we are able to get this design from a uh, partner lab in the at uh, the Mbwa lab where we have we have, have been able to use their original blueprints to build this uh, variable temperature incubator. This is also a film, um, a sterile chamber which we designed locally also using the same uh, approach of sourcing uh, design outlines from people who equally have built it in the, in the open source uh, hardware community. And so far, this is our little space that we are leveraging for uh, solving community problems, leveraging biology. I would want to introduce uh, the amazing team that is equally helping to move the kind of work that we are doing in the lab uh, here. So I will call on uh, Adam, who would introduce himself, uh, himself, and then we have another colleague of ours. Hi. So my name is Prince Adam Samu, a biomedical engineer and graduate from the University of Ghana. I'm currently working as a research assistant in the high bio lab, uh, working on the molecular biology to uh, enzyme production, uh, technically like those things we are doing. Um, hi, my name is Jasmine Pijem, a graduate of Ken University, that's Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. I study biochemistry and I'm also currently working as a research so this this is an amazing team so far uh, that is helping uh, move biology uh, in, in our little corner here in Ghana and we are so like I said from the beginning super excited to uh, give you this virtual tour of this lab um, and I want to thank uh, people who are funding and supporting the work that we are doing so far, namely the Open Bioeconomy Lab based in the University of Cambridge, who has been heavily supported by the Shuttle Foundation for all these years, and to other, other partners who we are working with uh, for purposes of time, uh, whom I may not be able to introduce, who are supporting our work so far. Thank you, and we look forward to uh, engaging with you and uh, anyone who is interested in partnering with us on, on projects moving forward. We look forward to hearing from you. Thank you. That was lovely. Okay, so uh, I'm not sure I can take any questions in Harry's place because I don't think I'm an expert enough in the field, but again, um, we have something for you coming up on the screen again. It, it was, it was, it was very fascinating, this session by Harry. Okay, now closing this poll and having another. I, I wish Harry would have been here to like see the results and like talk to you guys. That that would have been like truly fun. Okay. So now done. Uh, it's eleven thirty and I think my favorite part of the conference is here. Workshop. So um we're going to have workshops. The first will be Instagram by Gunter Sifted. Uh Designing Sustainability, Circular Economy, 
uh, bio based materials and more by louis rose um, bioinformatics and homology protein modeling by bsri lab bio printing by alessandro quiroz and understanding molecular cloning by dr jyoti moy aish so um, i have a small set of instructions before you um, get excited the the thing is um, uh, attendees we will have a separate meeting for the workshop where all of you are already assigned your respective allotted workshop the link for the meeting will now be displayed in the chat box what you i please don't leave this meeting for 2 minutes just 2 minutes bear with me um after joining this link you will be um, you will be assigned breakout rooms for your respective workshops each of these workshops each of these uh, breakout rooms will have a volunteer from our team so in case you face any problems please let us know please let the instructor know in case you have any doubt um and in case you have network issues because network issues has been a much bigger pain than the pandemic itself um you can return to this link in the chat box and um put your name email and workshop allotted in um the chat box itself we will make sure that you are manually assigned to the breakout to the breakout room good so uh after workshop we have um, our lunch break for an hour and post the lunch break um i request all of you to come back to this meeting the link which will be sent to the whatsapp group just in case and in case you are still confused what you can do is go to the darwin login page log in with your assigned email id see the events in uh, their sequence and you will be provided a button to join via the website itself so everything is sorted everything will be enjoyed everything in its own time so i'll see you guys okay you guys can join the link and go to your workshop Okay uh guys just in case all of those who are left here um we will be ending this meeting so that we can start another meeting and uh, I'll see you guys there it will take 5 minutes for all of you to join your respective workshop so please have some patience um we'll all get together uh and uh, this the links for both the meetings will be sent on the whatsapp group in the due time thank you very much i'll see you guys there